Hey, Doombots, Tony Skinjili here with uh, the first event specific video because the first event specific thing has occurred. We have the first global release of the Cave of Wonders event. I just want to make a quick video discussing it and giving you my opinion on certain things. First of all, overall, this kind of event is the kind of event you're going to see all the time. And I'm just going to go in and let you get a little bit of an understanding of what I mean by that. Now, this kind of event has three different stages, stage one, stage two, and duh, stage three. Stage one is where you're going to access Aladdin and Jasmine shards or extra Aladdin and Jasmine shards that you can farm normally from the campaigns anyway, uh, which is great. Extra access to characters that are pretty decent, always a positive. Actually, extra access to characters that aren't decent, also positive. You've got nothing else to do, right? So quick look at what this kind of event entails you'll check uh, the recommendation is kind of letting you know how strong it is but the requirement is letting you know what the minimum you're gonna have to bring in is gonna be in this case all you need is five two-star characters that are heroes uh, don't even need Jasmine for it the whole reason this is great is because the stronger your characters are overall the faster you're going to be able to progress up this chain and eventually get more Aladdin and Jasmine shards and as you can see I've completed this I actually completed this way back in the beta because I'm a big fat blubbery whale and I love Aladdin that said I don't imagine too many players are going to be able to get much further than three or four star uh, requirement which is fine this is actually a relatively early game player favored event because you don't need to go much higher than four star and as you can tell, I got quite a few of the characters. Basically, you're just gonna get some extra Aladdin and Jasmine shards, which are great. Aladdin, one of the best characters in the game. Jasmine, more of a utility character for a kingdom team, but with Aladdin, absolutely phenomenal. So, quick check on these. I wouldn't go too crazy. You'll notice I didn't even three-star this one when I beat it. You don't have to. You get the full rewards just for beating it, so go for it. Take a shot. Any attempt you make doesn't count against you. You could just go until it stops you from being able to. The second, the Guardian Lair, this one's a little different. This one requires uh, Aladdin and Jasmine, so based on your previous farm and the previous node in this event, you should be able to progress relatively far just maybe not immediately that said you can even see some fights i was able to just clearly beat until we got to a certain point when i was able to completely crush it and that was just a time thing so not panicking this is uh, primarily the way to get genie shards in the early game as the genie farm node is uh, probably in the level 30 to 40 range for the average player so uh, as you progress through this not only will you get uh, genie shards, but you will be able to get a couple pieces of gear here there some gold these events really do kind of reward you for taking part in them but they are a one-time completion event and you can kind of check right here two three four stops at five now uh, it's very unlikely that without spending on first pass many players will be able to complete the five star event uh, just getting that many Aladdin and Jasmine shards, unlikely. I know I couldn't do it without spending the very first time I saw this event, which was the day I started playing this game. That said, I believe the second pass when I saw this event the second time, I had well more than enough investment in these characters to complete this part and even get a little bit further in the Jafar finale. Now, the Jafar Node 3 event is a mixed bag. It has, if you've watched my video, one of the best spells, at least uh, for progressing and leveling in the early game, uh, and that is Iago or Foul Play. Uh, it also has Jafar, who I'm not gonna say is a bad character because I've already done a video on who the characters that are bad uh, or characters to avoid are, but I'm going to say he's definitely not as illustrious as an event character would make him out to be uh, unless he's recently gotten a rework that i missed out on which i don't believe so quick look at jafar chance to inflict continuous damage on basic special charms an opponent great ability great utility ability but on defense you never re he never does what he's supposed to and on offense 
Sometimes you just don't get the lucky target you want. Uh, ultimate is a delayed damage attack. That said, it's a pretty decent chunk of damage. And is passive on villain teammate performing a basic attack, chance to assist. Works really well with a downtown villains team, even though he is a kingdom character. But he's not especially worth the effort. That said, Iago spell, totally worth the effort. And if I recall correctly, you can accomplish the Iago spell relatively early. Possibly even Lamp Chamber 2 again. I can't see because I don't have it, but I believe it was either 2 or 3, the first or second node on this event that unlocked the Iago spell. And all you need to do is unlock the Iago spell to immediately know how amazing that is. Again, the most important thing to note is that each event nodule or node feeds into the next one until you reach the finale. So as you farm the Aladdin and Jasmine access points, you should be able to get more access to Genie. As you gain more access to Genie, you should be able to go into the Jafar fight. Uh, this one requires specifically Aladdin and Jasmine for the first node at two star. Totally reasonable for any player to get that during the course of this event. Uh, once you get past that one though, you now require a three star genie. Obviously I believe that's because G is a three star unlock. So you might not be able to get this on the first pass unless you're truly industrious, a little bit lucky or decide to spend a little cash. But as you progress, you get more Jafar shards. I believe if memory serves me correctly, uh, you needed to accomplish up to number four to actually unlock Jafar. Um, so yes, that is correct, because I didn't have to do anymore. So because of that, it shouldn't be too difficult for you to imagine that in the next pass of the event, you should have access to Jafar. Again, he's not so incredible that missing out on him is going to hurt you much. Uh, like I said, I'm a huge Aladdin nerd, so I'm going to get anything with Aladdin's name on it. But the most important takeaway, in my opinion, from this event is you're going to get a lot of free character shards for characters that are going to help you progress your main PvP slash heroes team, which is Aladdin Jasmine. And PvP would be adding Shan Yu and making a kingdom team, of course. Uh, and you're going to have access to Foul Play Spell, which on its own is absolutely worth whatever it takes to get, let alone the amount of time it's going to take to farm it up. Uh, characters like Genie and Jafar, not absolutely necessary. Adequate parts of the Aladdin team work very well together, but I wouldn't go out of your way for it. Um, other than that, I don't have much to say, so do me a favor and comment below. Uh, let me know what you think of this event and if you anticipate future events like this to be beneficial to you or not. If uh, I get enough of one or the other response, I will go to Glue and say, hey guys, just so you know, uh, a lot of people aren't feeling this or hey guys, great, keep them all like this, especially because most players have not seen raid key events yet and that's going to be a fun conversation. So. Like I said, comment below, let me know what you guys think. Uh, in the meantime, I want you guys to have a good night, have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.